Hi guys, welcome to today's video and today I'm going to be looking at PWM controllers for your enclosure extractor. So I've got one here. I've had quite a few questions when I've been talking about extractor fans fitting them to enclosures. If you've seen my previous videos, you've seen that I made a temperature controller uh, with a Raspberry Pi, not that they're connected. The temperature control is completely independent. <clears throat> but after making that video, some people were asking, what about uh, a progressive fan controller? So I've picked up this one. Uh, this was from Amazon and at the end of the video I'll give you details of the one I've got. There are a variety. I picked this one for two reasons. Uh, the shape is just what I need, rectangular shaped to fit in my current unit. And also uh, reading the write-ups. It was quite easy to configure. Uh, some of the others seem to be a, a bit more complex. Um, so let's have a look and see what we've got. So just looking at the PWM controller, uh, you've got the LED display and it comes with a temperature probe, which has got a reasonable length of uh, cable as well. Uh, I've just quickly uh, added the power supply here. It's a 12 volt power supply going into it. The other thing that you need to note is that it doesn't come with this particular plug and cable that I've got here that goes to the fan. But I will give uh, a link as to where you can get them from. So if I was to pull that off, you'll just have four pins on the board. So you need to purchase the actual plug and pins. So how does it work? Now with this one, you set a stop temperature. So anything below a certain temperature and the fans will not work. Uh, then you set a start temperature where the fans will start turning and they start turning progressively up to the full temperature that you set. So th basically there's three temperatures, a stop, a start and a full fan temperature. This particular module also has an output. One of the outputs here is to a relay, relay coil, so it'll be a 12 volt output to activate a relay coil should you wish to turn off or on and any other device that's connected to a relay, but that's not something I've covered. Also, I haven't connected the output directly to my fan. I've used a PC extension, uh, fan extension. It has, has to be a full cable. And by the way, your fans to work this all have to be full cable fans. So it's just an extension that I've chopped off and wired up with the pins here. I really don't want to do that to my Noctua. So, so I've got a Noctua fan here. It's a four cable fan as we can hopefully see there. Um, the color code was slightly different on this third party extension. In fact, uh, one, of, one of the cables was yellow and the Noctua was green. That was the only difference. But at least I can just connect them together and it will all work. Another thing you can do, if you buy a splitter, so I've got here a one to two way splitter, I can actually activate two fans should you need to have two fans controlled at the same time. And I know in my Prusa box with my Mark III, I have got a small 40 millimeter cooling fan for the IT board and the main extractor there. So I will be using two in that, but with my Tukari enclosure, I will only need the one main fan for the moment. So let's get on and uh, see how we set the temperatures. So to set up the temperatures, we've got three buttons here, a plus, a minus, and an OK button. So if I press and hold the OK button, the low temperature, so it starts with L, that's the temperature that the fans will start to turn at their slowest speed. So you can plus or minus that, 
Let's see if we can get it a little bit darker so you can see it a bit better. There we go. If you're happy with that, then you press the OK button once more. And that's the high temperature. That's the temperature that the fans will actually go at full speed. So plus or minus to set those. And remember, it's all degrees C. And finally, the closed temperature. That's the temperature at which the fans will turn off and will not start up. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that the start of the fan temperature and the full temperature must have a five degree difference and between the start temperature and the closing or off temperature must be at least two degrees. So now that we've set all three, let's have a, a look and see how it works in practice. So we have the probe, we have some extremely warm water, that's probably a bit too hot, and we have some cold water. We have two fans, a 40 millimeter, let's turn that around a bit, uh, and a 120. So the closing temperature was about 22, but I think the start temperature was about 25. So if I just dabble it in there a little bit, there we go, it's starting straight away. But it's not a full power. And that's 2260, so 2200 RPM, 26 degrees, and you can see it's going down on the RPM as well as the temperature is decreasing. But if I put this in a little bit more, it'll probably go straight up to the maximum. There we go, and you can see, and probably hear, that the fans have gone up to the maximum. Pop them in some cold water, and you can hear it as it cools down, the temperature decreases. Now those fans will carry on spinning until it gets down to 22 degrees, which was the stop temperature. I hope that shows you how the PWM controller works. So that's a brief demonstration of how the PWM motor controller works. Now I'm going to be fitting that into my, where is this? My previous controller enclosure. So I've printed a new front. Uh, that should just pop in. Uh, if anyone wants the STL to this, I'll uh, include it in a link shortly. Uh, so I think I'll be preferring this to the previous controller with ha having the facility to vary the speed. Right, so if you liked this video, uh, please do a like and a subscribe. That would be really appreciated. Uh, links to this, as I mentioned, will be in the description. Uh, same with details of the fans. I do recommend the Noctua fans. And also, let me just lean over a little bit. If you want details specifically on this controller, they're not available generally on the um, Amazon description of this particular product, but I have got the content here. So I will provide uh, a link somehow, or I'll perhaps post it at the end of this video, page by page, so you can understand exactly how to use it and configure it. Great, well, thank you very much again and look forward to seeing you again soon.